sin is a female principle. See Psalm 7 and verse 14. The first and most frequent Hebrew word to be translated as sin is the feminine nouns given in Strong's Concordance H2403. It is rendered sin 284 times, punishment three times and purification three times. As a noun rather than a verb, it focuses upon the offence itself or sometimes upon the habitual sinfulness of the individual. The Greek word is also a feminine noun which is always translated sin or failure or guilt, meaning missing the mark. Sin as a principle and power is personified as a king. Romans chapter 5 verse 21, a power which reigns in the body. Romans chapter 6 and verse 12 and 14. Romans chapter 7 and verse 17 and 20. Romans chapter 6 and verse 6. With this understanding of the word sin as a feminine noun, it will help us to understand why sinful actions are described in terms of childbearing. Psalm chapter 7 and verse 14. Look, there is one that is pregnant with what is hurtful, and he has conceived trouble and is bound to give birth to falsehood. The psalmist metaphorically pictures the typical sinner as a pregnant woman who is ready to give birth to wicked, destructive schemes and actions. James chapter 1 and verse 13 let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Sin gives birth to death. See 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 54 and 56. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. The first letter of John chapter 2 verses 16 and 17. A woman, a female adult. However, the word woman is sometimes used in the Bible to refer to a weak and helpless man. See Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12 and chapter 19 and verse 16. The language of child bearing in connection with lust and sin is echoed by James. So wicked men bring forth children, that is sin, after their own likeness. See Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21, Romans chapter 1 and verses 29 to 31, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 and 10. So wicked men bring forth children, that is sin after their own likenesses, and are thus known by their fruits. See Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16 and 20. Micah chapter 7 and verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye no confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Ere the woman in thy bosom represents the soul, the desire of the heart. See Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 2, chapter 23 verses 1 to 3, Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 11 and 12, the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 5, Genesis chapter 34 and verse 3, Psalm chapter 27 and verse 12, chapter 35 and verse 25, Psalm 41 and verse 2. 
Job chapter 15 and verse 35, they conceive mischief and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepareth deceit. The wicked's iniquity is as his children, he nourishes them, and at last they turn on him. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 4, none calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth they trust in vanity and speak lies they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity isaiah chapter 59 and verse 5 they hatch crooked eggs and wave the spider's web he that eateth of their eggs dieth and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper here is all the quiet evil of the serpent as in Eden. Now the first clue to the serpent's identity is in this first line. God made the serpent more intelligent than any other animal on the earth. This is the mind of the natural man. Very crafty indeed. This serpent began to coax Eve away from God and the tree of life. Eve represents the soul of man and Adam represents the spirit mind of man. God had made everything perfect but the mind of man did not believe this and more importantly did not know this. The mind of man turned away from God is life and perfection. Eve the soul of man turned to knowledge for the answers so instead of accepting that all is perfect man chose to know this was proposed by god man must go through darkness and death to know light and life so the serpent is that crafty mind of man that led our spirit into a spiritual death the carnal mind is concerned with things of this world not of heaven note the garden of eden represents the dominant power of the soul and the serpent represents pleasure the word sin is related to the word soul the soul is a feminine noun in hebrew greek and coptic Sin is born of the soul. See James chapter 3 and verse 15. This wisdom is not one from above coming down, but is earthly, born of the soul, demonical. Therefore, it is within our souls that we give birth to desire, sin and death. If we look at Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4, we can see the connection between sin and the soul. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it itself shall die. Therefore it is within our souls, bodies, or our whole being, we have a female principle within us that gives birth to desire, sin and death. Reading now from the secret book of James or the Apocryphon of James found in the Nag Hammadi scriptures. For he knows the desire and also what it is that the flesh needs. Or do you think that it is not this flesh that desires the soul? For without the soul the body does not sin. Just as the soul is not saved without the spirit. But if the soul is saved when it is without evil and the spirit is also saved then the body becomes free from sin for it is the spirit that raises the soul but the body that kills it that is it is it the soul which kills itself because the body is the soul and sin arises within the flesh or the body the soul so therefore it kills itself reading from filio of alexandria 
Now the female offspring of the soul are wickedness and passions, but an healthy state of passions and virtue is male. Male and female. Male and female must be regarded first of all as principles and secondary as the gender of certain human beings. The male and female principles are opposed to each other. The male principle provides spirit and form which are imperishable and incorruptible while the female principle provides body and matter which are perishable and corruptible. In many Gnostic texts the mind, Nous, is regarded as male. He is a disciple of his mind which is male. See the testimony of truth. Meanwhile the soul, Psyche, is regarded as female. When the soul was in the upper aeons it was virgin and androgynous as long as she was alone with the father she was virgin and in form androgynous see the exegesis on the soul the female principle includes desire after i departed from the body of darkness in me and the psychic chaos in mind and the feminine desire in the darkness i did not use it again quoting from a book called zostarosterism in the nagamadi scriptures or however it's pronounced zostatranas something like that again from another book though from the nagamadi scriptures the second testimony of the great seth the female principle includes the passions which bring divisions instead of unity and do not become female lest you give birth to evil and its brothers jealousy and division anger and wrath fear and a divided art and empty non-existent desire hence salvation requires that we reject the female principle and choose maleness flee from the madness and the bondage of femaleness and choose for yourself the salvation of maleness the teachings of sylvanus from the nag Hammadi scriptures live according to mind do not think about things pertaining to the flesh acquire strength for the mind is strong if you fall from this other you have become male female and if you cast out of yourself the substance of the mind which is fought you have cut off the male part and turned yourself to the female part alone you have become psychic since you have received the substance of the formed if you cast out the smallest part of this so that you do not acquire again a human part but you have accepted for yourself the animal thought and likeness you have become fleshly since you have taken on animal nature for if it is difficult to find a soulful man how much more is how much more so to find the Lord. It should be noted here in the teachings of Salvanus, in the expression, you have become psychic, doesn't refer to someone having psychic powers, it actually refers to you have become of the soul, or you have become soulful. It's just the translators aren't translating it correctly. In the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, in chapter 14, salvation is spoken of again in masculine terms in chapter 14 and verse 4. These are they which are not defiled with woman, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. 
these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. So in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 4, it speaks of salvation of males, that is, men and women who have become males in Christ, not defiled with women, not associated with the mother of harlots. See Revelation chapter 17 and verse 5, and her daughters, the apostate churches, have christened them from Rome downwards. Many of the redeemed are themselves women, which consequently makes the interpretation symbolic. These are they which are not defiled with women. They were not guilty of spiritual adultery with the false women of the apostasy. See James chapter 4 and verse 4 and Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20. In Revelation chapter 17 and verse 5. For they are virgins, they are faithful to Christ. See 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2. These are they which follow the Lamb, Christ as the Lamb offered in complete dedication to God, is their example, inspiration as shepherd. They see him as the Lamb, quiet, submissive, offering himself in sacrifice to God, but also powerful to conquer the world. See the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, and verses 21 to 25. Wheresoever he goes, even unto the crucifixion of the old self. See Galatians, chapter 5, and verse 24.